Chef Robert Curtis from Bourbon Steak is going to make one of his signature dishes. Yes. You're so organized and everything is ready. So tell me where you begin. All right, so uh, first we start off with the chicken breast. So we just take our breaded schnitzel. As soon as we have a hot pan, oil gets nice and hot. We're just gonna pan fry. You wanna see it move rather fluidly, not quite too, uh, I, I guess, thick. When the it's oil. Like nice and cold, yeah. So that lets you know that it's just about ready. If you're ever unsure, you always test, throw a little bit of the bread uh -huh. in, see how it fries nicely. What makes a schnitzel a schnitzel? Uh, I think it's the method of pounding it thin uh -huh. and then dressing it with the breadcrumbs, the egg wash, everything like that, you know? When I see you making, I realize I probably don't put enough oil in my pan at home. Yeah, exactly. You have to have it covering the chicken. Yes. Okay. Yes. You want a little bit of that oil constantly washing over the top. And when you, when you get that cooked just right, it's actually going to puff away ever so slightly from ah. the chicken breast. And that's how you get a, a real true schnitzel. Mm -hmm. Just don't tell any Argentinians, because <laughs> they'll tell, me, tell you that it's a milanesa. Right. Instead. Yeah. But this is just that version though, right? Absolutely. A different version of milanesa, which I've seen as well. Very, very similar. So when I was staging at Noma, uh, there's a restaurant called Bar. It's also owned by the, the same guys. And they had the best schnitzel I've ever eaten in my life. And it's just one of those things that's so simple and so perfect that uh, I knew I had to try and get close to what that dish was and, and how delicious it was, so I did this. Again, you're using that technique poile, where you take some of that hot fat and you're just basting it over top. You know, you mix up some of the cold butter and... This is why it tastes better at the restaurants. Yes. You know, to add that extra butter at the end to yep. provide that richness. Basting with all the fat. And again, when the, the fat's hot enough, it's gonna cause just slight air bubbles and pockets to form, and that's really what you want. See how bubbly that, that fat's getting yes. with all that melted butter. It's starting to brown a little mm -hmm. bit, adding a little more Delicious. depth. And then it's just a constant, constant base. And was, did you say you season the chicken too? You with season the, after. After, That's okay, I see. If you season beforehand, uh, you wind up drawing out moisture from the chicken uh -huh. and getting a, a soggy schnitzel. So no salt and pepper on the chicken, and no. just the flour, the egg. Aha, uh -huh. I'm also good. This is something else I'm good. We add a little bit of porcini powder, and that just helps deepen the mushroom flavor for our Ooh. schnitzel. Oh my gosh, look at that, beautiful. Yeah. The biggest thing you notice is, you can see the surface of the schnitzel, you got all these peaks and yes. valleys. That's where all the flavor is, and all those puffs. It's actually making it crispier, because it's drawing the crust away it from the chicken. It even looks crispy. So again, we just go in with a little bit of butter, hot pan nice and smoky. We add our chanterelles and just deepen. We sort of just start them in the pan with all those chanterelles. We let it absorb some of that butter flavor, start to cook down a little bit in that butter and get that nice, again, the same same vibe going. And some are nice chanterelles the best mushroom for you for this dish? Uh, for this season, absolutely. They're probably top three uh, mushrooms for me. And mushrooms are, are pretty meaty as vegetables go. Do these quick cook pretty quickly? There's actually two schools of thought when it comes to mushrooms. Okay. Right? Uh, mushrooms, you either cook them for a really long time and you develop the flavor and they become super delicious and they intensify and they absorb whatever you're cooking them in. Think about like a bourguignon cooking down the mushrooms and yes. all the red wine. Yes. Or you do it super fast, super high heat. You get this really crisp texture on the outside and you keep them nice and tender on the inside. Right? This is a, sort of combining the two. Right, I was going to say kind of right. in the middle. Yeah. Because you're cooking them sort of slowly in the butter letting that butter brown, letting the flavor develop, everything like that. See, I bet you even people who say they don't like mushrooms would eat the chanterelles and butter. <laughs> Absolutely. Just got some nice color. The yes. chanterelles start to get nice and roasted. Just go ahead and add those straight to the top of the schnitzel. And then we're going to sauce a little bit. Cool. Good, yeah. It has all the chanterelle flavor in it. So there we have our schnitzel, nice and crispy, golden brown, covered in all of our delicious chanterelles. We have our sauce to go on top, just a shallot, caper, a little bit of wine, just to dress, add that salinity, add a little more flavor to the dish. All that brown butter, just the same flavors that are already in the schnitzel. And then I had to use my, my second favorite mushroom, just our crispy maitake chips. Just adds a little more depth, a little more earth to the dish. What do we have here, chef? This is our brown butter schnitzel with roasted chanterelles and maitake mushrooms. Beautiful.